All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, well, it's almost a sunny San Diego again. It's been a bit wet recently, which people aren't used to around here. But uh, anyway, it looks like it's drying up. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Sofia in Bulgaria by Eroslav Georgiev and from Dubai... Rohan Khan, how are you doing, gentlemen? Very good. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Eroslav and Rohan are from Orange Trail, which provides agency ad accounts for Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter to clients. Hundreds of clients using their ad accounts, and the clients work with you because they get a much higher level of support, unlimited spending limits, and our accounts are really hard to get blocked. And that's what we're going to talk about today: is scaling your ads safely without getting blocked on Facebook, TikTok, Google, Snapchat, Twitter, etc. So um, just to, to set the baseline, uh, what is it? Because a lot of people, you know, just start off and they start going, OK, we better start uh, uh, marketing and doing ads. And they just start going on, let's go on Facebook and let's do this without really knowing what they're doing. So what are some of the pitfalls that people, you know, that people kind of fall into immediately when they start off without really knowing what they're doing? Sure. Um, yeah, that's a, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, that's a, the, it's a very good question. Um, the first thing that we would say is a very big pitfall that a lot of people fall into, and not just newbies, also people with much more experience, people that have been in the industry for years. Uh, one very big pitfall is that they put all their eggs in one basket. And what I mean by that is when you're, for example, running Facebook ads, uh, you have different assets, right? You have your ad account, your fan page, your business manager, uh, your pixel. And what they do is they create a BM, they create an ad account from that same BM, they create a pixel and the fan page from that same BM, and they start running it all together. You know, and that's actually, uh, I guess it seems intuitive to a lot of people in the beginning, but it's actually not the best thing you can do. Because if, for example, your business manager goes down, if your ad account goes down, you know, if your fan page gets disabled, which can happen to anyone, you can have a completely compliant white hat niche and product. And that can still happen. That happens to so many people that are having, you know, very clean, clean offers. Um, and what happens is if even one asset goes down, it puts all of the other assets at risk. Uh, Facebook has an internal score. If an asset is associated with another asset uh, and that other asset gets disabled, the, the score of all the other assets go down as well. So the proper way to do it is you need to decentralize your setup. You need to have at least two or three business managers. Uh, the business manager that runs the ads should never be the business manager that owns the ad account. So ideally, create an ad account from another business manager. You share it into the, you know, the, into the main business manager for running ads. You create the fan pages, the pixels from other business managers. You share them across. You can share across assets. Share them across into the main business manager that runs the ads. And the business manager that runs the ads, that should never be the owner of the assets. It should never be the original creator of the assets. The main reason is because whenever a business manager goes down, uh, it's mainly the business manager that is actually running the ads that goes down. And if that business manager goes down and it doesn't own any of the assets, you can simply disassociate that business manager from any of your assets, uh, get a new business manager, and then just link the assets again and it keeps your assets safe. So I would say that's, for me, that's one of the first big pitfalls. Um, Rohan, perhaps you have something to add? Yeah, uh, cheers, Ari. I think another thing is, Plain and simple, people don't understand policy well enough. And it also comes down to when they're writing copy, when they're you know running the ads, the creatives. Um, if you don't understand the copy and you're also designing these other aspects of your marketing, it can put you potentially in a, in a huge hole because you might not know where you're going wrong with your copy. For example, if it's the, the ad copy and you're writing a headline and the text of the ad, and you're just scratching your head, where am I going wrong? But if you don't know the policy, you won't, you'll never know. So that's one of the things that are in trail that, you know, we, we see quite often and, and we have this kind of secret weapon of uh, an ex meta employee working for us, who is now our compliance manager, wow. who obviously has that wealth of deep knowledge uh, relating to compliance that a lot of clients may not have unless they've like really studied the policy guidelines. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, plain and simple, that's that's just one of one of the, the biggest reasons when people just keep getting their ads rejected, can't figure out why, and um, never know how to fix it. 
Yeah, because um, I mean, let's face it: with all the social media platforms, their their uh, their rules and uh, they can be very confusing. Their their guidelines can be very confusing. They change, um, so it, it it is quite a challenge if you're doing this kind of as a newbie, or even or even you've been doing it for a while, but you do. It's not your one hundred percent focus. You're never going to keep up on all of these things. Are you? It's going to be really, really hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, if you think about um, if you think about one of the the girls out there, uh, what's her name? Erica. She does. I always read the fine print. Have you seen that girl? She's blown up yeah. all over social media. Uh, she read the fine print because you don't have to. We met her in Dubai last year. Lovely girl, and um, she takes the, the the boring stuff out of everything, so you don't have to. You know, but how, how many people can honestly put their hand up and say? I read the guidelines. I read the, you know, the fine print of every purchase I made, every airline ticket, mm -hmm. everything. So, obviously, this is something that, um, yeah, it's not sexy work. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's, it's not. It's not fun. But um, someone's got to do it. So the people that do do it and know the stuff, we either hire them or we learn from them to then present the data to mm -hmm. our clients at Orange Trail in a nutshell. So, so what is the? So it seems to me like that that's a huge opportunity for people who get this right because it sounds to me like probably a lot of people are getting it wrong. Uh, yeah, for sure. So especially in niches which are slightly more risky, we're not talking black cat, and I'm nothing you know clearly against policy, sure. but there's a lot of niches which are slightly more risky. For example, uh, any kind of offers in health and supplements, uh, they're not necessarily black cat, but they're much more risky. So especially with for companies that understand the policy and better yet, they have the creativity to run riskier niches compliantly, there's big opportunities for them because their competitors are trying to run those ads for similar products, but they get their ad accounts disabled. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you understand the policy and you can be creative or how you can stay compliant, but still have effective ads that is a very big competitive advantage mm -hmm. and and also across these platforms are they all pre, are they all similar what you got to do or they all have different uh, you need different approaches for different ones i'm um, sure i mean i, I, so I was waiting for yeah i mean I, it's a good question i was just thinking about that there um, i mean i can i can definitely say that sorry i can definitely say that there's certain platforms are more um more strict for example, we can say from experience, uh, TikTok is more strict than Facebook. Um, really depends on on case by case, but generally speaking, TikTok is a bit more is more strict than Facebook, um, and you need to have there's there's little nuances. And then as you go on the different platforms, you start learning about the different nuances of like, okay, on this platform I can do this kind of thing, on this platform I can do that, but not by not you know not to cross you know. So that's there's definitely different nuances that you need to that you just pick up as you start advertising on the different platforms. And then when you, when you work when you work with people, uh, how do you how do you assess like where the best place for them to be is? Because sometimes, uh, you know, we think we need to be everywhere, right? And you just go, oh, there's no platforms. I need to be on all of these platforms, but it's not necessarily the case. Um, when you work when you work with your clients, like, do you help them figure out the right platforms uh, that they should be on? Well, often I think they already know, John. They know mm -hmm. what works for them. We don't, you know. The only times we maybe tell them that, hey, listen, we've seen offers similar to yours. We won't disclose what exactly because we sign NDAs with all clients, sure. but we'll say, hey, listen, we know people in your industry, in your niche, similar offers to you who are actually crushing it on Snapchat. Would you like to try? Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the reason we do that is obviously because we have that insight uh, from, from different platforms. We know CPMs can be very low uh, for certain offers on different platforms. Snapchat's a goldmine for that. Twitter, especially lately, we've seen that there's really low CPMs, um, especially since the Elon takeover, you know, you have conversion optimization now unlocked and people, they may not have those insights that we have. So we always advise clients. We won't, you know, necessarily like uh, push it down their throat or anything. We'll just say, hey, listen, this is an option for you, but often they know what they want already. They've already identified their winning you know pockets of uh, audiences on which platforms they you know advertisers nowadays are quite smart they've, they've tested they've run everything and it's only when they're really having issues with their advertising that they come to us that they're getting banned for no reason mm -hmm. um compliance issues that's when like when you're really stuck and you just have no support from support you know they're you're taking like a few weeks for them to get back to you even then it's an automated mm -hmm. response well what do you do in that case so yeah we're in that you know minute kind of sample of advertisers that's where we really come in and we shine 
because you know we have direct access to the representatives to get you answers within 24 hours. Um, and we know pinpoint exactly what's wrong with different stuff. So yeah, that's that's where Orange Trail is really solving a huge pain point in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. And and I know you um, you mentioned Facebook earlier, um, Eroslav, but are there are there similar things across the platforms, like things that are kind of counterintuitive that you wouldn't think of? Like, for instance, you know, decentralizing your business manager. I mean, that's not that wouldn't jump out immediately as the correct thing to do because you'd always think, oh, I should centralize everything and have it efficient. Is it the same across other platforms? Are there just similar kind of counterintuitive um, things? Yeah, that's a very good question. So you can do that to a degree with other platforms as well. So, for example, with TikTok, they have their own version of a business manager, it's a business center. You can then share an ad account with another business center. So you can do that to a degree for sure. Uh, similar issue with Google. Uh, I would say Facebook allows the more the most flexibility in terms of decentralization. And by and large, although TikTok is growing, by and large, still the two you know behemoths in the advertising space are you know Meta and Google. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some differences, but Facebook allows the most, uh, most, uh, opportunity for really decentralizing your setup. Yeah. So, so when you, when you work with a, a client, what is the, what's the first thing you do when they come to you and they say, you know, I, I don't know what's happening here with my advertising and I'm getting blocked some places or I'm not getting the results I'm looking for. Well, we offer them a Kleenex, a tissue, first of all, because they're usually in tears. <laughs> and then after that, we, we decide what to do next. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe a hug. But yeah, listen, it's it's uh, case by case. It's different uh, situations for different clients. And um, generally, first of all, we understand what's the issues they have so that we can identify. If they're really serious issues, If because look, we have sometimes clients that are you know pushing the boundaries of marketing, even mm -hmm. offering something like Snake Oil and we're like, right. look, we, you can't do that with our accounts. So that's the first thing, compliance check. We need to see, would this be approved with our URLs? When it is approved, um, you know, we obviously get them up and running with an ad account within 24 hours. If it's not approved and it takes a bit of tweaking, this is where, you know, Julia, our compliance manager comes in. She tells us, hey, this is an exaggerated claim on your landing page, on your, you know, your headline, your, your, your video. That needs to be changed. Because if you run that even through an agency account, you'll still have issues. You know, these are higher tier accounts. But they're not unbannable. Of course, if you run, you know, uh, risky stuff, it can get banned. So generally, it's just a compliance check. Then we understand, you know, where the issues might be, and then from there, we just set them up. It's it's quite a seamless process. Mm -hmm. It's very quick. It's just we just need to know that the client is running something that's allowed. Yeah, and as in terms of them, um, then uh, you know, creative because you mentioned it earlier. That's another area. I think a lot of people kind of just copy each other, or they, or they try to come up with things in house, even though they don't really have the experience to do it. I mean, do you find that sometimes, like you know, that people are either just copying the <laughs> copying and tweaking the the copy of other people, or coming up with stuff that it's just not it's just not advertising friendly. Yeah, this actually happened recently. Um, we, we found one dropshipper using another like uh, branded uh, content producer's content. And then we saw another client trying to do the same. We were like, guys, come on, just, uh, you know, use one of our partners. We have some huge partners in the industry below, below dot app. It's a UGC custom platform. Um, you know, we have discounted rates if you want to use them. That's someone you can you know reach out to put in our code. Um, and for like 50 bucks, you'll get a custom UGC video made for your product, for, for your right. brand. Um, and it doesn't even have to have a product. You can literally tell them, hey, say this for my product and not send them anything and they can just pretend they have it. Right. So, you know, we see this time and time again. Um, and look, this is, you know, it's part of the game. You just use the content that you have to test. And then when you see some ROI on that content, you're like, okay, it's worth me ordering to get content for mm -hmm. and then investing in it. But um, yeah, content plays a huge, huge part. And also now, if you want to win with your advertising in you know, you know, customer acquisition, client acquisition, if you really want to get more market share, you really have to win on the content side and testing, 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 um, you know, different angles, different scroll stoppers. So yeah, content is really king um, nowadays with these platforms. And what is the impact uh, of AI going to have? Particularly, just if we even on the content side right now, because people are suddenly, suddenly everybody realizes they can go to ChatGTB or those same things and start generating like content yeah. and having it generated for you. But it's not always the greatest content, and it's and obviously you know some people like Google and stuff can can 
tell if it's AI yeah. generated content. So is is AI or AI tools starting to have an impact, uh, an impact yeah. either negatively or positively or both? Yeah, so that's like a very good question. We actually use ChatGPT every single day for just different things, you know, like writing copy emails, different yeah. things. And the way I personally view it is that AI is an amplifier. Mm -hmm. In essence, if you are a good marketing person with good marketing skill, you're going to uh, use AI to scale your work and be much more efficient. If you are a stupid and lazy person, you're going to use AI to just ask it some stupid questions and not be productive. And um, I think it's an amplifier. Like you still need that marketing skill. You still need that marketing know-how. You still need all these different attributes that make a good entrepreneur. But AI is just an amplifier. And I don't, for, at least for now, I don't think it's a case of AI completely replacing people. I think it's mm -hmm. a case of people, you know, good people with AI will replace other people without AI. Yeah, no, we would agree too, absolutely, that uh, AI, is a, AI is an enabler. It's not a replacement. It should actually allow you, to, as you said, an accelerator. I think it was Steve Jobs way back way back when said something about AI. AI is like a bicycle. It just should help you get there faster, but it's not going to go on its own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You still need that expertise. You still need those other qualities and attributes. Yeah. Yeah, where do you um where do you see advertising on these platforms going? Are there are there things coming down? Are they are they evolving? Are there things coming in the future that you're looking forward to, or are there changes that are going to be more challenging? Do you think? I think well, more placements. You know, there's a, there's a wider spectrum of placements that are added in constantly. Um, you can see within TikTok, they have a uh, search uh, style of ads coming in. So I think it's just naturally, you know, each platform just identifies where is the, the, the bang for the buck. And they're trying mm -hmm. to identify new ways for advertisers to come in, uh, spend money with them, because that's how they make money at the end of the day. So I think, you know, generally, it, there's always going to be feeds, real ads, because that's where the attention is going. And as you know, attention is the, the biggest commodity right, right now that mm -hmm. everyone who, who holds the most attention controls, you know, has the most power. So in, in this case, I think the platforms that will do well are the ones that identify which are the highest attention holding, you know, um, aspects of the platform. So Reels, you know, uh, they started off on, right. was it TikTok? And then it went to Instagram. Now they're on YouTube as YouTube Shorts, you know, mm -hmm. so everyone's kind of copying each other. Um, but I think where the, the, the ones that will succeed is who managed to, you know, get the highest bang for buck with their platform ads. And I think TikTok is actually doing really well on that. They understand that the advertiser revenue, they need mm -hmm. to see ROI. And it's not always going to be just huge brands, you know, just putting money in with uh, branding campaigns with no expectation of ROI. But there's also, you know, there's an expectation that you have to get uh, you know, return on investment. So I think personally, that's what I would say. Eric, do you have something else to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think that was, those are very good points. I think just to add on to that, definitely what Rohan said, it is an attention economy. And the mm -hmm. thing is, attention is becoming more and more expensive every single year. You can see that in the Facebook CPMs now compared to five years ago. Uh, TikTok CPMs now are actually quite low, but they're probably going to go higher and higher and higher, just like with Facebook. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of who is going to be the most efficient at attracting as a business, who's going to be the most attracting, uh, the best, most efficient at attracting attention, but also who is going to be the most efficient at leveraging that, leveraging that attention for more long-term profits. So for example, right now, a lot of people are making, you know, like a 20, 25, $30 product where on the front end, you know, cold ads acquisition, making it profitable. Uh, I think with time, that will be less and less likely that you're going to make that profitable on the front end. And it'll be more of a case is how you structure your offers and your business so that you can maybe at least acquire them, at least at break even, even for that low price and then make it profitable on the back end. Um, so I think, yeah, the I, still, I think the core skills of being a good business person and entrepreneur will stay. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a good offer and good upsell offers and good, good funnels, good business in general, uh, you're going to be able to make it work. But people that are just leveraging uh, this short term burst right now with TikTok with, you know, cheaper products, um, I think they're going to, you know, get weeded out. Yeah. And, and yeah, and it's interesting, like what you were just saying about, uh, you know, shorts and reels and all of that going across and, and the attention economy, uh, because it, there is so much noise and we're so distracted and we're so bombarded. It's like, I mean, how, how, how do you stand out in, 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 the, in a, in a place that's so overloaded? Is that a question? Yeah. Or is that rhetorical? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of both. <laughs> I yeah. see. Um, 
we recently we actually touched on this on another podcast that we were invited on and i think how you stand out is tailored to each platform so mm -hmm. on tiktok we've seen that the type of content posted there is shorter snappier you know to the point um and you really have to tailor and curate your content according to the feel of the platform something that works on tiktok will also work on facebook generally but something that you know works on facebook may not always work on tiktok like I said, the length of the content is generally shorter, whereas on Facebook, you have generally longer, um, longer, long form copy, long for text, long for videos that work. Um, that's not really possible on, on TikTok. As you know, the, the text on the screen is quite short. The style of videos are short. I generally, maybe attention spans are shorter, too. Um, mm -hmm. That's one thing I would say if you want to stand out, curate your content according to the feel of that platform. Yeah, and I've, just to add on to that, I think that the business fundamentals and marketing fundamentals are, are, are what's going to be uh, still the most important thing. You know, platforms and channels that change over time, mm -hmm. but you have solid fundamentals. You know how to make a good product. You know how to make a good offer. You know how to position your offer. You know how to make proper upsells and everything to increase lifetime value. All those fundamentals are going to stay the same no matter what channel. You know, if, hypothetically, if we just snap our fingers and all of social media just disappears tomorrow, uh, those same skills, the people that have those skills the best, they're just going to go on billboards and TV and newspaper and they're going to make insane offers and they're still going to keep crushing it. So um, I think, yeah, to answer your question is those fundamental skills and not just, you know, I can go on TikTok and click some button and run some ads that you can learn that in one or two days. But I think those underlying fundamental skills are what's going to be the differentiator. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Because uh, let's face it, I mean, we live in this shortcut culture and everybody, you know, a lot of people are looking for a shortcut, you know, they don't want to put in the hard yards for things like this. They just want to be like, oh, this is easy. I'm just going to do it. So um, it's probably creating a great opportunity for people who know how to do it properly. Um, so just in, in, in closing, then, um, what would your what would your advice be? to people who are starting to get into the advertising game on these platforms like what what is the what is the number one thing they should avoid yeah great question avoid. Ooh, um, um yeah go ahead Rohan. oh okay I can, if you're thinking, uh, I can yeah go ahead. go ahead um so yeah i think a lot of people it's kind of related to my previous point but yeah. a lot of people they get stuck in this mousetrap of oh let me take a facebook ads course and they they focus too much on the the low level technical things like should I launch a 3% lookalike audience here? Should I optimize for traffic? The, the, those low level uh, tactical things. Um, whereas I think back to my previous point, if they focus on just becoming better entrepreneurs and better marketers, that is going to transcend whatever platform and they, they can make any platform profitable. So focus on learning copywriting, focus on learning how to make good offers. I think those are the important skills that people need to be focusing on. And a lot of people, they just focus on the little technical, tactical things, which are not the most important long term. Yeah. And I, and I agree with you. And I think sometimes, I, I don't think people always understand how, you know, copywriting, uh, you know, good copywriting, how, how, a, a, how big a skill that really is. And that's something that you need to develop and continue to, to, um, to evolve over time, that skill set. And I think sometimes, you know, people just think, oh, well, nowadays I can just throw any kind of copy together rather than, as you said, the fundamentals, because I think that's always is the, you know, the business, the, the fund fundamentals stay the same. The um, the execution changes. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree on that. Well, listen, this has been fascinating. Um, thank you both for this. Um, all of uh, both uh, Rohan and Aroslav and Orange Trail's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell everybody a little bit more about Orange Trail. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. So, um, John, we, you know, we invite anyone who's having issues with their ad accounts, their advertising, and they really don't know who else to turn to, and they've already reached out to support. Um, Orange Trail, you know, we do have contracts and agreements with pretty much all the major advertising platform ASVs, Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Bing. We also did a deal with Taboola. And all of these deals are for one reason. We provide whitelisted high-level ad accounts. These are premium level advertising accounts that don't get banned as easily, that have unlimited spends, they have a direct line access to, to reps. Uh, you know, we have ex employees from the platforms working with us with compliance help. And there's just one reason for that. That's just to help you with stabi stability with your advertising. And you know, we offer unlimited ad accounts, backup ad accounts if you need. 
um, we have 24 five support with, with our staff. So it, we're really, uh, you know, helping advertisers in the industry just to run ads with stability. So if anyone's interested out there and wants to get in touch, you can always book a call with our team uh, at orangetrail.io. And we would have to see if you're eligible. We can't work with everyone. So it's, you know, we would have to see if you're, you fit our criteria, but we welcome anyone who's having issues to, to get in touch. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, I'm a big believer in in core competencies. And nowadays, particularly, there are so many new skills. I mean, it's impossible to keep up with everything. So I always feel you're better off finding the experts in that field. And uh, that's the only shortcut I would ever recommend is find <laughs> find a good, find really good experts who know what they're doing, because it's impossible to keep up with all the different skill sets that people need nowadays and you really need specialists and i think that's the future the future is there's going to be more and more specialists 100 yeah. percent. yeah well listen if you're thinking of advertising on these platforms or if you're advertising on them already and you're not happy with what's going on then i would encourage you to reach out to orange trail and Aroslav and roan will fix it all for you all right. So listen, uh, Thanks a lot, John. yeah, thank you both for today. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.